New Jersey is in the same trouble as Illinois and other parts of the U.S. They have promised more than they can possibly hand out. All they need to do now is make the public confident, boost their morale, and then take from them when they're not looking. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to take a look at New Jersey. I want to touch on pension funds. I want to look at cost of living, inflation, and so much more. Let's begin by taking a look at this article out of NJ.com. Governor Phil Murphy's administration ordered an immediate freeze of state spending and hiring, all because of an esoteric accounting maneuver caught up in a charge state budget talks. The freeze comes a month before the end of the fiscal year, which the state risks ending in the red if it doesn't quit non-essential spending or the state legislature doesn't allow Murphy's administration to transfer spending from one part of the budget to another. Some accounting tricks in order to get by. All right. But it's not a shutdown, they're saying. Don't worry about it. Nothing to worry here. The administration put New Jersey's state agencies on notice that they should prepare for another state government shutdown if a state that budget isn't signed by the June 30th deadline. So one article to the next, same website, suddenly there's a different picture. All I know is that they will take from the people. They will take and they will take. This happens every single time around, whether you look at, you know, on the federal level or whether it's state or cities or anything. They get pushed to the edge. People are saying, hey, you got to do something. You got to do something. And so they act. And when they finally do act, it's not in our best interests. It would be good if the government stayed shut down for a long time. Now, I want you to keep this in mind as I go through the rest of this information here in this video. Composite cost of living, 2017 annual average. You can see for yourself, if you're living in places like New York and New Jersey, maybe you're in California or others, like Hawaii as an example, which tops the list. It's very expensive. You can see food prices, energy prices, and everything that you have to buy is more expensive than other places around the US. You can see here, even somewhere like Texas, seems relatively cheap in comparison. This is important to note because when you are on a fixed income, it becomes critical to watch your spending, watch how this increase will affect you over the years because you know your expenses are going to far outpace that so-called cost of living index that they put on all of these different funds. There's no way. Well, let's talk about pensions here. New Jersey's treasurer said on Thursday that she will increase the expected rate of return for the state's struggling public pension system from 7% to 7.5% and then lower it again over time. They're not going to be able to get 7.5%. And they're not going to be able to get 7%. If anything, they'll get 3%. It's a more realistic number, and I think they should just come out and admit it. I've shown you here on this channel how, over time, they have never been able to reach their mark. Never. Not just New Jersey, just in general, pension funds in the U.S. So why would you actually go and increase? I think now is the best time to slowly decrease the amount. It's just a matter of fact that they will be cutting pensions. Governor of California said they'll do it next recession. That's a fact. They said that. You can look around the United States where there have been cases where pensions have been cut. And the average seemed to be about 30%. And it could happen. It could happen to anybody at any time. We could see the same thing to uh, you know, Social Security or any other healthcare type benefits. You have to expect that in the next crisis... 
we could see this occurring. The switch to a higher assumed rate means that the state and participating local governments in New Jersey will now, well, for now, escape the higher costs that arise when investment return assumptions are lowered. So all you need to do is get people to look over there and then you can take from over here. Genius. Works every time. Distract the public and take from their back pocket. The higher rate will save about $238 million for the state and more than $400 million for the local governments in the near term. Taking from people is never a good thing, but this is what they do. This is all governments are capable of doing. And just something I covered back in March, but wanted to show you here. The governor proposed adding some taxes, trying to get funding for record $37.4 billion budget that would boost spending on schools, pensions, and mass transit. The proposal 4% higher than the current fiscal years relies on a tax for the wealthiest that has yet to be approved and lacks support from uh, certain individuals, and it goes on. Why in the world would a tax ever fix anything? Never has, never will. Talking about getting votes. That's really what this is all about. Don't worry, we're going to fix the problem. We're going to get you more schools. Okay, that gets votes from the uh, mothers and fathers out there who are worried about the school situation. Don't worry, we'll hire more teachers. Great. What about the elderly? Oh, we're going to make sure that you get all the health care you need. We'll make sure your pensions are stable and steady. We'll make sure that Social Security and other benefits are paid out to you with a great cost of living index. They promise the business people, you're going to get lower taxes. Those other guys, they are increasing taxes on you, but don't worry, we're going to fix that up. We're going to be beneficial to you and your business. I mean, these people are promising everything. And then they never accomplish much, if any of it. Personally, for me, I don't believe a damn word. All right. What about this? The gap between the total assets reported by state pension systems across the United States and the benefits promised to workers now reported as the net pension liability reached $1.1 trillion in fiscal year 2015. I wish I had some newer numbers than this. I'm sure I could find that. I mean, this article is from one year ago, so this is the newest numbers as of last year. So I would try to definitely find some more recent numbers on this. All right. We have a big gap that exists here, and they don't like to talk about it much, but it is important that we are addressing this. Annual funded ratios decreased in most states in fiscal year 2015. Go down the list and take a look for yourself. It is truly something to see that when you see a pension that's funded at 80% and you're thinking, wow, that's excellent, you know you have a problem because that's 20% underfunded. It needs to be at 100%. There isn't an excuse in a bull market for it to be underfunded by even a penny. Sure, you can make excuses that, okay, we're having a downturn now, times are tough, markets affected this, and so we're going to get this going. But that's not happening. The market's been rising since March 2009, and yet we still see a shortfall. Even though the official unemployment rate has dropped to an 18-year low of 38 laughable percent, the economy is still broken for a great number of Americans who are living in a precarious existence, nearly invisible and economically marginalized. For millions of Americans, the security and income of a steady 9-to-5 job is far out of reach as it was at, uh, during the worst of the Great Recession, something that I talk about consistently. And this is all 
discussing, you know, the whole gig economy, what we can see that the average individual is trying to make money from their side hustles. Maybe they're an Uber driver, or maybe they are, you know, delivering this or that, and there's websites like TaskRabbit and everything else that are not being used as a job on the side. That's becoming their primary source of work, making money here and there. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I know that a lot of people who are working in these positions want a nine to five job because they want that steadiness. They want to make sure that they can bring in an income. They want to have a salary. They want to have benefits. They want to have, you know, all the perks. Look at this. Most popular side hustles, percent of adults who earned money last month in each activity, selling goods online, house cleaning, yard work, maintenance, babysitting, dog walking, and so on. And like I said, absolutely nothing wrong with this. Everybody, I think, should be, make, if you're working a 9-to-5 job, you should be building something on the side. Maybe every Saturday you have something that you do, Okay. You go in, clean some houses, clean some businesses. Maybe you're, you know, cutting the grass for people in your area. You're shoveling snow in the winter time. All kinds of things that you could do, whether it's online activities or whether it is uh, something locally in your area. Maybe you're um, doing some consulting over online or through the phone or anything. These are all good things. But if you are doing so as your primary source of income, and it doesn't make the amount that the average person would be making in a nine to five, then I think we have a little bit of a problem. That is the case for a lot of people. And this uh, also skews the numbers. If they are reporting their income here, they're gonna be, um, you know, I think skewing the numbers. I think that a lot of times we are seeing people who have two, three jobs, temp jobs and things, and it really throws off all the statistics. So I don't really like to look at the statistics specifically for what we're seeing. I'd like to look a little deeper. <clears throat> Will the state of Illinois pony up $100 million to assist the Obama Presidential Center in Jackson Park? Of course. Chicago Tonight has learned the preliminary plans to do just that. How would you search, uh, how would such a proposal fly in the state that is bleeding red ink, especially when the Obamas have proposed 100% private funding? That's right. Don't worry, everyone. Not going to cost you a dime. So you can praise it. As long as you're distracted over here, we can take from your back pocket. Sources tell Chicago Tonight there have been a bipartisan talks among lawmakers for $100 million in capital funding to assist with the Obama Presidential Center. And it goes on more details. Look, you think things are free? People are really silly. I got my Obama phone. I'm happy. I don't need to worry. Obama's going to pay my mortgage. He's going to fill my car with gas. Don't believe a word they say, if you want the best financial education that's available, the financial education you didn't learn in elementary school and high school and post-secondary through your family and friends on the radio and the TV, then you want to check out my books. My books will get you from zero to hero. You're going to be able to know the truth about the financial system. They work hand in hand and they sort of are like a lock and key. They they fill in the blanks for each other. So the first book, The Money GPS, it's got the uh, sort of the history, the foundation, talk about the four asset classes, how to profit from it. And then my newer book gets into other subjects, familiar ones, but also into the, uh, you know, becoming self-sufficient, how to earn income, reducing your debt, and so on. So I do appreciate if you would just check them out at Amazon. If you click the link, in the description, it's going to bring you over there. You can flip through the pages of the books for yourself. Take care.